Hey, hey. Uh, so, first thing, let's do a little bit of warm up. So, I want everyone to raise their left hand. Now, raise your right hand. Now, clap. <laughs> Woo, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Uh, JavaScript Israel is all about being nice and about uh, knowledge transfer and helping people learn things. Uh, nice is our sponsor this time, so I want to give them a shout out for standing out for our values. Uh, uh, if you're looking for a job, uh, you can go to bit.ly slash jsiljobs and hear about uh, what I have to offer. Uh, I recommend checking it out. Uh, today we have Miles. Woo! Woo! And Gil, who is coming again? No, come on, give him a big, big applause. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, Ben's not here. No one clap for Ben. He's, he's late. He's in traffic. And then we have Sandeep from the Google uh, Core Woo. team. Woo. Google Cloud Engine. So some updates. Uh, our Facebook group reached uh, almost 5,000 members uh, this month. So uh, let's make it 5,000 uh, for the next meetup. And then we also had uh, goodness squad uh, events. We had a good one yesterday. And we have one every month where you get to write code uh, for open source. We always want more good lectures. So if you have a lecture that's like, uh, you're, you're, there's something that like upsets you and you want to talk about it, or there's something great you wish more people knew about, uh, then please do submit your lecture. Uh, and help us create more meetups. If your company or your, your boss or someone you're working with is interested in helping us uh, make more of these, uh, please do t talk to them. And uh, we're looking for more sponsors. Yay. Uh, so we always want feedback. Uh, so please rate us on Meetup and uh, tag us or uh, join the group on Facebook. and. Uh, Hashtag JS Israel on Twitter. And if you participate in the Goodness Squad events, uh, please hashtag Goodness Squad. Uh, and please turn off your phones uh, because it makes a lot of noise and it makes the speakers sad. And I like the speakers and I don't want them to be sad. And uh, enjoy the show. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tal Tzur. I'm a software architect in the multi channel recording uh, division at NICE. And um, I guess uh, some of you are familiar with NICE. But uh, kind of a quick headline about uh, our business. NICE is responsible to record and manage and store interaction within contact centers across the world. Contact centers is the place where you have you know, many agents. It can move between just few of them up to many thousands of them. And they are kind of interacting with their customers, giving them a service. And uh, it could be, by the way, voice, it could be social, it could be video, chats, whatever. And we are the company that responsible to record those uh, interactions and uh, manage them for uh, long-term pur uh, purposes. <clears throat> Today, I would like to take this opportunity, actually mutual opportunity, to share with you kind of a less famous uh, solution that we have. Actually, it's a premium solution that is targeted to our enterprise uh, customers. The name of the solution is real-time authentication, text independent. It's in its core. It has uh, our own uh, voice biometrics engine. And it's uh, quite a surprising solution, a very creative one. Uh, and it targets to, to handle the following uh, challenge. Assume that you have a contact center where uh, one of the agents is now interact with, with the customer. The customer identify himself, saying this is and that my ID. It can be you know account ID, social security number, whatever. And now the, the, this organization, this uh, agent, needs to make sure that uh, this person is indeed the one that is claiming to be. Meanwhile, behind the scene, our system uh, it has many parts, but uh, the capture side starts to capture the, those interactions. Actually, we have two interactions in this uh, call. We have the voice, the conversation between the customer and the agent. And also, we have uh, the screen activity of the agent. So now we are capturing that. In the meanwhile, also RTA is in the picture. And it starts to uh, buffer this data. And once it has enough information, and it is about eight seconds into the call, top of 10 seconds, we are actually creating a kind of a temporary voice print of this person that is claimed to be this and that. So after those eight seconds, we have uh, two things. We have the customer identity, such as a social security number. And then we have also the temporary voice print. 
After that, the engine can approach our uh, voice print database, something that we prepared in advance, and from there to fetch out the actual voice print of this uh, person, of, of, sorry, for this uh, customer identifier. Um, this is something that we authenticated, and uh, now we can, you know, match between them. So if everything is okay, then we can move on with the call. If not, we are notifying the agent that he needs to start ask those security questions, such as what is your favorite color, your I don't know, name of your primary school, etc. So this is it. This is RTA. This is kind of a um, win-win for all sides, actually, uh, including the the end uh, customers there. And uh, but I want to touch kind of. Uh, in one minute, uh, one of our main challenge, how we are building those uh, voice print uh, databases. So, of course, we need to scan all the historical calls due to regulation, and ICE usually save calls for about seven years, even 20 years, so there is no problem. We have millions of calls and we are building those voice prints. We need around 30 seconds in order to get a good voice print. But the main uh, question here, how we are attaching the customer identity to the voice print? So we have several ways to do that. But I want to touch here one of uh, the most unique one, I think the most creative and interesting one. We are leveraging also the screen recordings that are associated to the, to the voice. You know, it's like looking into a video, looking for clues to something that happened. And this is something that we are also doing with this. It starts with a short training phase where the customer teaches us what to look within those videos, including this specific attribute in those uh, parts of the screen. It can be CRM application, it can be just one CRM application. And while we are running those millions of calls and building up voice prints, we are also playing back the screen of each call. And once, we the, once the system uh, tracks down those specific CRM applications that the customer taught us about, we are also can fetch out the customer identity right off, off of the screen. And once we do that, we have this match of, of a voice print and authenticated uh, customer. Now we do that several times because we have millions of calls and the assumption here is that each customer has, I don't know, three, four, five, even 20 calls and we are authenticating all of them. So we eventually we are getting a very good voice print authenticated with this, this specific uh, customer ID. That's it, right? So thank you all. This was LTA. If you have any questions about this solution, other solution from NICE, general questions, I will be here during the break. <laughs> Enjoy the meetup. The sounds we make with no end-to-end -end tests and bugs in production. Um, oh, yeah. See? It works. Um, quick time. Stop, stop the... File, new screen recording. There we go. So it works. The, don't forget to screen record me. I, uh, a former architect at Wix, I just switched. I am head of software development program at Create School. What we do is we help people that know absolutely nothing about computers go into this incredible, incredible profession called software development. Uh, as it says here, down here, I was, am, and always will be a developer. I love, I love, I love this profession. I love this thing. It's an art, it's a passion, and it's a huge love of mine. Okay, what I will do is I will test a server while reciting a poem by Lewis Carroll. Okay, uh, we will start with the testing, the poem will come uh, later. Uh, okay, so this is the server. Uh, you're supposed to know Node, well, at least some of you, and it's okay if you don't because I can, you know, show it like this. The server is, a is like um, Dan Abramov's server, so it's a counter. You can increment a counter, you can decrement a counter, and you can set the counter value. So setting the counter value, just put an HTTP put to counter. The counter is in a database. You can see that database there. Uh, you can increment the counter using post, decrement the counter using post, and you can get the counter uh, and it returns a JSON. And now I need to test it. So I have created the test folder, but that's about it. Now I need to create a file. Let's call it test app.js. And now I will use which which uh, which will which uh, testing framework will I use? I will use the one that I love so much. It is called Mocha. While we install Mocha, hopefully Wi-Fi works, I will start writing the program. A Mocha program starts with describe. What are we testing? We're testing the app. Okay, and up in the app, what we will do. 
No, no, it's okay. The reason, the reason, the reason it's hollering is because this is ESLint, so I will say global describe, and in a second there will be it, and in a second there will be before, and in a second there will be after. You've got square brackets instead of an array. Oh, thank you! Thank you! <laughs> All my love to you. Okay. There we go. So, what will the test do? For the first test, it should test that the uh, uh, initial value is zero. Okay. It should, should, I hate these kinds of tests. It should enable, not should test, it should get, it's the app. It should get an initial value of zero. And it should enable decrementing. I hate these, uh, enable incre incrementing. And it should enable decrement. I never could think of something really smart to say in the description of these tests, but it's okay. Okay, so this is Mocha, and this is these are the tests that we should run. Let's let's start. We need to uh, run the server and start fetching. First things first, we need to run the server. Uh, we do not do it on every test. We will use a before. A before means before everything, do this. We could do here before each, but we won't. So uh, what do we need to do? We need to require the app, first of all. Const app equals require, and the app is hopefully here. Yes. Now, what do we do with the app? The app is just an express app. It's not listening. The server.js is the one that requires the app and then does the listen. But the app itself is just an express app that doesn't listen, which is really nice because now we can make it listen. On which port do we make it listen? This I learned from the wonderful Benji about like uh, three weeks ago. If you say port zero, it will listen on the first available port, uh, which is wonderful. And when it's done, we need to tell Mocha that it's done. So we write here done, and Mocha gives us a nice parameter we usually call done, which is a callback, which we say that it's done. Too many dones. Okay, so after, we need to close the server. So we do server dot, oh wait, I, we don't have the server. So we define a variable called server, and we initialize it here. So now we have the server and it's listening, and we do server.close done. So we've initialized the server. The server is now running in each it. Now we need to get. We need to fetch. Aha! Fetching, we will not use the built in HTTP client of Node because it's uh, very low level. I will not say um, hideous, but it's very low level. Um, uh, so we will use uh, my favorite one because it supports promises and it's very lean. Uh, it's called node fetch. So const fetch equals require no new no, node fetch. Okay. All good. So we now start fetching. Fetching returns a promise, but first of all, we need to say what to fetch. It's localhost colon, ooh, which port? We use the server. Remember the server which we initialized on above? We get its address and we ask it what the port is. And slash, um, what was it? What was it? Counter. Counter. I need to close the curly brackets. Two point, points of love uh, for the guy over there. Uh, you get two hugs. Uh, okay. Now, fetch returns a promise. So we do dot then, right? No. Dot then is so 2015. <laughs> we async await the, the uh, I will not say that word. Uh, okay. Const response equals await fetch. Look how nice it is and without a semicolon. Uh, okay. So we've got the response. And we expect the response dot status to be how much? To equal, sorry? The status! 200, thank you. Bad, bad. Okay, but expect. See, look, a Visual Studio Kit says, I don't know what expect is, obviously, because we haven't installed Chai. Mocha does not come with an assertion library, incredibly enough, and, and, and actually goodly enough. So we use expect, which is a part of an assertion library called chai. Thank you. Uh, right, and this is response. Good. So we've got the response, and now we need to get the body to check that it's zero. The counter is zero, but it's not that easy, because we need to await 
the response dot, and uh, node fetch has a nice uh, thing called JSON, which returns a JSON. We don't need to parse the JSON, and we say expect body to deep equal ooh, um, counter colon counter colon zero. Okay, first test. Will this run? I misspelled what? Oh, shuttle. Yes. Shuttle. I love copy paste bugs. An initial? Should get an initial. Wow, you are. Oh, I love you guys. Oh my god, thank you. Okay, so we run npm test. Will this work? No, it will not. No test specified. So we go to package JSON. Uh, by the way, okay, and we add test. And we just run Mocha. Mocha by default looks in the test folder and runs all the JavaScript files there as test. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> okay, npm test. Will this run? Yes! One passing. Woo! One. You are old, Father William, <laughs> the young man said, and your hair has become very white. And yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might injure the brain. But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. Let's continue. Yep. OK. Uh, test app. Now we need to enable incrementing. So we need to put. But the problem is, oh no, we, we actually we don't have a problem. Set. Increment is a post. Oh uh, yeah, we need to post. Thank you. Uh, so we copy paste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get me on. Yeah, this should be. A, oh, no, no, no. This is. This is. We have ten minutes. Uh, okay. So we go to counter slash increment. But as the uh, uh, person there said, we need to method, method, colon, post. Okay, why is it saying that await is read? Because we haven't async the function. Await only works if you async the function. Okay, now expect the response.status to equal 200. Await body response. And what should be the value of the counter? One. One. Okay, will this work? Yes. But wait, maybe get. Wait, maybe get doesn't work. Maybe it's 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 you know just returning one plus. We need to get after that. But we have this nice really function that already gets. So let's 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 make it into a, a common a common const check get equals this. And instead of checking zero, it will check a certain value. And we do the value. And here, I know I don't need to async and await, but it's easier to understand. Await check get. And yes, zero. So I wait check get zero here. And here, oh, I don't need to. Uh, this is an async function. We don't need to return a promise uh, offline. Uh, await uh, and await check get one. So yes, uh, you had a good uh, thing, uh, and, and, and you're right. So now we're checking that not only does it return the right uh, value, but the value of the counter is one. Will we run it, and will it work? Yes! <laughs> you, are, okay. you are old, said the youth, as I mentioned before, and have grown most uncommonly fat. <laughs> Yet you turned a back somersault at the door. Pray, what is the reason of that? In my youth, said the sage, as he shook his gray locks, I kept all my limbs very supple. By the use of this ointment, one shilling a box, allow me to sell you a couple? <laughs> so yeah, come, come to create. <laughs> okay, um, decrementing. Okay, decrementing. Now, this is really, really bad because we're not, we're, we're always uh, th these tests depend on one another. That's really, really bad in, in the world of testing. So we need to s set the value before, uh, before, before working. How much time do I have? Five minutes. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. OK. So let's, let's set counter. It's an async function to a value. 
And setting a value is putting. So we copy the post, which is easier. OK. We copy the ghost. And instead of post, we do put and not increment. We put on the counter a value. The body will be a json.stringify stringify er, of counter colon value because we want to set the value to put the value value that we got here. And unfortunately, JSON, we need to set a header, the content type, because otherwise node doesn't like it, will ignore it, rightfully so, I think. Well, that's OK. Why is there a OK? So we here and we expect the response to be status. We check the by and we there we the value return should be value. So we have this nice set counter which we can use to initialize. So we set here the should enable incrementing will set counter to zero just to make sure await. What happens to people that do not await in an async function? Very very strange things. Yes, that's a problem. Uh, we await set counter 1. Now we decrement. Let's do set counter 43. Why 43? 43. Yes, thank you. Uh, so we decrement post equal to 100, and the answer should be 42. Does it run? Thank you. I, I really love you people. Uh, and no, it's not working. It's not working. It's giving 41. Maybe I have a bug. Ooh, let's look. Yes, oh my god. <laughs> I decremented twice. But by the way, I checked. I, che I tried this. Um, this, this works in C++. <laughs> it does not work in C and Java and does not work in Java and, and does not work in JavaScript. Uh, I, I can have a whole lecture on why, but I won't. So we fix the bug, uh, run the tests, and now everything passes. <laughs> you are old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than sweet, I think. Yet you finished the goose with the bones and the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? In my youth, said his father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife. And the muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. <laughs> Last one. You are old, said the youth. One would hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balanced an eel on the end of your nose. What made you so awfully clever? I have answered three questions, and that is enough, said his father. Don't give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off, or I'll kick you downstairs. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bum ba bum, bum ba bum ba bum, bum ba bum ba bum, bum ba bum 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 bum.